fate, Scott. Are you a sports fan who loves to have a good laugh? Oh, yeah. And you're in the right place. I'm going to make him an offer again. Life moves pretty fast. The Patriots win the Welcome Super Bowl. to the Man Cave Chronicles. Welcome to another episode of the Man Cave Chronicles podcast, a podcast of talk culture where everyone has a story. Another special guest this week, uh, you've seen him on Cobra Kai, that's Kyler, Joe Sow. Joe, how you doing? Good, good. I'm glad to be here on this show. Welcome, Thanks, Elias. Uh, welcome to the cave. So, Thank uh, you. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, what's uh, how are things with you, man? I mean, I know, you, like I said, you have a huge hit, you know, uh, uh-huh. Rot- Rotten Tomatoes has given it 10 out of 10. I know that's amazing. Cobra Kai. Yeah, Cobra Kai is is just taking over. Has become its own thing. Um, yeah, we finished shooting like a few. Yeah, it's been a few months ago now, and it's just taken off. And uh, it's I'm pretty happy that it is because it's breaking a lot of stereotypes. It's uh, it's yeah, it's actually pushing forth the Hollywood agenda, like, of, you know, having more minorities, you know, and yeah. that's what it's all about. Yeah. So, um, we'll talk about Cobra Kai, but at first I want to get a little background on you. Uh, so tell the listeners, uh, wh- where you're from? Um, I was born in San Francisco, like, uh, but grew up in Oakland and in LA most of my life. Um, yeah. So I'm, pretty much one of the few people that uh grew up in la and is doing this in the entertainment industry yeah so because like most of the people in the entertainment industry are from out of town from the midwest or something you know yeah um yeah so uh are you in school right now with uh while you're acting no no i just graduated and um i'm just right now trying to become a full-time actor we'll see how it goes but uh of course uh, along with that is like my parents all telling me don't do that and <laughs> don't go into arts and become a doctor or a lawyer or something so yeah we'll see where this goes man yeah what do you like uh, what are you into you know like uh, you know like as a kid everything were you into sports or anything like that or what do you yeah, enjoy yeah, doing yeah i'm into all like rec sports like um football basketball uh i do play like soccer on the regular because that's like that's like my thing. Yeah. Um, my dad was like a professional soccer player, so he was. That's yeah, cool. ever since yeah, ever since I was like crawling, he'd be you know be playing around with the soccer ball. Um, yeah, so that's like my game, my go-to, and um, yeah, I like video games too. <laughs> I think everybody does. <laughs> where did, <laughs> hey, where did your father play uh, professional soccer? Um, he played it in Korea. Okay. Um, yeah, so like he was on the national team when he was younger, and yeah, ever since I was a kid, I was training to become a soccer player, and um, also training with like kung fu, and uh, yeah, just growing up, that's what I grew up with, like kung fu and soccer, and he just uh, yeah. But later on, he told he tells me not to become a soccer player, but become like a doctor or like you know something else i think i think that's like i think that's <laughs> like every stable. that's like every parent you know like you want to tell them to go <laughs> that you want to go do this and they're like you know oh, why don't you go become a teacher yeah. or an accountant yeah or, you know a doctor or a lawyer exactly um, like they all want like something professional or like you know a, a licensed position yeah as they say uh, yeah <laughs> so so what made you pursue acting oh man i loved it um it, it was just Honestly, to me, it was a breath of fresh air. Like, uh, um, at the time when I was going through a lot of stuff, like, yeah, I was feeling suicidal. I was feeling just a lot of depression and stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, uh, acting was my way out. Uh, I could be whatever I want, whoever I want. And to me, it just literally, yeah, saved my life. So, um, yeah. 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 That's why I love acting. It's just amazing, and because like you know everything that you hear from in at, at home is like no, you can't do this. No, you have to become that, and all those pressures just it just adds up, you know, so much that uh, acting became my um, you know release. Yeah. I can relate in the depression thing. I went through a little phase in my life too where 
you know, I wasn't happy with where my life was and everything, and I started getting anxiety attacks, and it wasn't fun, man. Yeah. It wasn't fun. No, it's a really dark place, and then, you know, uh, thank God I found something like this, you know? Yeah. So tell us about the first time that you uh, went and, you know, like, so you, so you said you were going to, you wanted to do acting. Did you take it in school, like acting classes? Yeah, 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 you... I definitely did. All my training was from my school. Um, I did a lot of theater, uh, and I was, like, really blessed to go, like, to, um, to Asia like um, uh, and study over there like with a guy who uh, who studied under like Stanislavski's method uh, uh, yeah it was just amazing like I basically lived breathed and like slept in like a acting school when I was over in Asia and to me that's like um, when I came back maybe like two three years ago three years ago now like, um, that's when I feel like I grew the most as an actor, um, like just studying over there and learning it over there. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was definitely cool. And, uh, yeah, I recommend anyone that goes into acting to definitely, you know, like own your craft and just keep, keep at it. Yeah. So how, how did your parents feel like when you told them, I'm going to pack my bags up and go to Asia and <laughs> study acting yeah, for two to three years? <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, they didn't know about it. Um, I just went and uh, I lived out there. Like sometimes I lived out there being homeless. I did every all sorts of stuff just to survive and become an actor. Um, but it was definitely tough, but definitely worthwhile because at the end of the day, it's still what I want to pursue. It was like my dream and I needed to succeed and I needed to survive. And it just taught me a lot of things. And, yeah. Um, once I got back, they still don't know about the struggles or whatever in Asia. But um, yeah, I, I usually just don't tell my parents. Really, I just go and do it, and then I, and then if they find out, I'm like, yeah, that's what happens, and they're like, okay, <laughs> because every time I do bring up something, they're like, don't do that. Go to safe route. Do this instead. You know, like, yeah. so it's just like might as well just do things on my own. <laughs> So tell us about the first time you landed your first gig, and what was it? Um, I would say uh, it was Gridiron Gang. Um, it was crazy. I was just an extra, like I was a little kid doing extra work, and man, um, yeah, on a set, this guy, the screenwriter, uh, he he was the guy that kind of approached me and said, "Hey, how would you like a part in this movie?" I was like, uh, "Like with lines?" He's like, "Yeah, man." <laughs> I was like, <laughs> Oh shit! All right, uh, I don't know if I can say shit, but no, okay. yeah, I was like, I was like, oh shit, for real, like in my mind and this body and everything. I was like, oh crap, this is crazy. And then he actually wrote me in, and to me that was just amazing. But uh, unfortunately, during the middle of the uh, whole shoot, like his son passed away, and yeah, he just he, it was just different after that, and it was just really a dark time for him. And um, but just being alongside with the rock um and exhibit it was just amazing yeah. amazing experience and they're like the most down-to-earth people in the world um so now you know we'll get into cobra kai now i have lots of questions for you yeah uh, yeah so um well first off are you a fan of the original karate kid um i never really watched the originals like um like I had to watch it after, like, uh, like, you know, in Atlanta while we were shooting and stuff. Yeah. So yeah, because um, I did know about like you know the crane kick and Daniel Sun and of course Mr. Miyagi, rest in peace. But like, yeah, I just knew about it. I know about like the crane kick and everything. It's just I never really watched the whole thing all the way through, and it's it was it was funny because you see the same guys like that you're working with. And they're a little, they're a lot older, and but they still sound the same, yeah. and they are the same, you know. It's, uh, that's just so crazy to yeah. me, and and in, to me, like you know, just you're, you're working with legends, you know, yeah. and they were the most, yeah, they were the most down to earth people in the world. So that was actually really cool. Uh, yeah, see, I, I don't know how old you are, but I'm I'm 40 years old, and like watching this, it, it brought back my childhood memories. 
Dang, that's crazy. <laughs> you know, so it's, <laughs> so yeah, like for something for an art to do that, I think that's just amazing. It's you know, power, it's for, powerful. It is, man. That's cool. Yeah, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, like I haven't heard one person that said they didn't like this. Really, yeah. that's that's cool too. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah I mean. Um, yeah, it's been getting a lot of great reviews, so I'm happy. It's it's a it's a thing of its own. It's a monster, I yeah. feel like, and it's only gonna get bigger, right? Hopefully. Oh, <laughs> I I see a few seasons from this. Nice, yeah. nice. So tell us about the audition, like when you went for it, like when you got the, you know, when you read the script. What did you think? Mm -hmm. I thought it was hilarious. I thought it was brilliant too. Um and. When I got the rest of the script later on, I was just like, yeah, they are brilliant. Uh, Josh, Hayden, and John, they're, they're the heads of this um, project. And yeah, their writing is impeccable. And I think they have great time, like comedic timing. And also like, um, yeah, all three of them together, since they're like homies since like college or something, or like, you know, before college, I, I feel like they had this great chemistry. and. Of course, you know, with great chemistry, they make great products, you know, like yeah. this whole script was just amazing. And um, it just added a lot of human elements to this as well. It's not just funny, but, you know, it had a human element. So to me, that was really important because for it to just be a slapstick, um, I just didn't want to be involved if it was something like that. Yeah. But um, yeah, even, uh, even the worst characters like Kyler is coming from a family. And that's what makes this, yeah. story so interesting and um they could go so many different ways with it too because it's all open-ended now you know like oh, why is kyle such a douche you know yeah, like yeah. why he's such a jerk so like something like this would definitely um can be explained later on and um hopefully like um yeah they yeah. do and, and yeah and, and they, you know not you know not only they're tackling like you know the Karate Kid story and everything, but they're also, you know, like the bullying and what kids go through these days also. Yeah. Yeah. And it definitely it hits home because, you know, bullying still exists and it's ridiculous how, um, how it is. So hopefully this something, something like this could actually alter the mood at school. And, you know, for, for all the people that are still in high school and stuff like, yeah, this, yeah. this, this matters. This matters a lot. Yeah. When you went to audition, uh, so how did it go? Tell us about the day that you went to audition. Who was in the audition? Oh, room? yeah. Um, I auditioned, I think, twice or once. I think I auditioned once or twice. I don't remember, but it was just like, um, it was a scene with uh, pep, with the Pepto-Bismol scene where uh, I hit Rio with it. <laughs> yeah. And then, like, coming out of the liquor store, yeah. Um, it was that scene that I had to audition, and, uh, reenact and yeah it, it was just, I thought it was funny but also like I want to because I didn't have a lot of background on Kyler um, I had to make things up so that I could I could there's a reason for me to be a douche you know yeah. or like a jerk mm -hmm. and um, yeah so then I just uh, I made up my own you know background where like you know it comes from somewhat of a you know, a troublesome family in a sense where there's too much pressure and other things. And I just went in there just releasing all that angst on, um, uh, on an invisible person named Rhea or Miguel. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, yeah, I think I just had fun with it. And when, uh, in the room, there was a few producers and Hayden was in the room. And I, I think, they had a few chuckles and laugh, and I don't know if that meant a good thing or a bad thing, but later on, you know, fortunately, they thought it was good enough. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I was kind of happy about that. Um, and also, I never really knew that I got casted for this until, like, two to three days, like, before we had to go to Atlanta. So wow. I was just like, oh, really? Yeah, I didn't think I would get that, but okay. <laughs> you know, like, let's do this. Yeah. Um, but it was definitely cool. It was a great, it was just amazing news. And I'm just so glad to be a part of it. It's yeah. a blessing for sure. How long were you in Atlanta for to film it? Oh man, we were there for quite a few months, man. Um, it's, I don't know, maybe 
two, three, wow. three, three months maybe. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was definitely uh, for a little bit. And we also had ADR sessions afterwards. So it wasn't just Atlanta. It was like a lot of pickup shops here and there, you know? Yeah. So when you heard that you got the role, how did you prepare for it? And what was the biggest challenge for you? Uh, the biggest challenge when taking a villain – uh, such as Kyler, in a sense, uh, is that you just have to really focus on um, why you are like that. You know, just, I think, uh, definitely, like, when I was preparing, I just had to just feel like I had a chip on my shoulder, you know. Um, like, if I had an older brother, if Kyler had an older brother, you know, like, he would be, like, the the golden boy in the family where I'd be like the, you know, the black sheep and something like that, where I could find there's a reason why I'm like that, you know? Yeah. So, um, I just kind of built that type of character and then just went in there and, um, yeah, performed. Uh, the thing is the hard, hard thing is like on set, you can't be a dick to like the other people, the other cast members and other crew members, you know? So like just to balance that out, um, it was somewhat tricky, but, yeah. uh, I realized like, you know, like there's a reason why people like after they're done with their scene, they go back into their trailers. There's a reason why they're like that. They do that. It's not so, so they could be like avoiding people's contact. It's just so that they could get ready and focus on, you know, providing the best, you know, manner of like, you know, the character. Yeah. So, um, what kind of feedback have you received from, uh, people that have seen the show? Um, so far, like on the streets, like, uh, it's cause like I live in like South Central area. So like, um, so far people have been like, ah, good shit, dog. Like, <laughs> ah, I saw that shit. And like people, yeah, people always giving me, um, like just, just always good vibes. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, it, it's been cool. Like, you know, like, Hey, you look like that dude from Cobra, Cobra kid. I'm like, no man, it's Cobra Kai. He's like, yeah, that's the shit. <laughs> <laughs> so like. Um, so, so everyone's, you know, snapping and everyone's Instagramming and crap. And to me, that's a huge compliment. And, um, to me, I'm like, yeah, it's just, it's just really cool to see something like this, like an art form that actually, you know, like, uh, um, that encourages like minorities and encourages minority casting in Hollywood to do so well. Yeah. So I'm kind of happy about that. So how is it working with like Ralph Macchio and Zapka and what kind of advice have they given you? Oh man, it's amazing. They're just the most down to earth people. And for such, you know, for such big people to, uh, to be like that is just a humbling thing. And, um, when I'm working around them, they're just like, you, for, for Ralph, like he, he likes to, he likes to joke around on set a lot. Uh, after every take or every line, he says something different, you know, where he'll just like ad lib a few other extra lines and stuff just to ease the mood and just make it fun, you know? And yeah. that's something that's really cool about Ralph. Uh, he, he's a genuinely nice guy. Like, um, for instance, um, there's a time when like, uh, Oh yeah, my, my agent, he had a baby boy. So, uh, yeah, he became a recent dad. So, um, I was just like, hey, hey, Ralph, like, uh, my agent, he just became a new dad, and, like, he loves you, man, Karate Kid, and he's all like, hey, man, let's do a video, like, you know, and I was like, ooh, that's dope, you know, like, so he actually um, we made a video together just to congratulate uh, my agent, Evan, um, and he's he's that type of guy, he's a really class act, you know that's, what I mean? That's cool. Yeah, it's really nice. Um, and and for Billy, he's just a really down to earth person. Like, yeah, he, he's the guy that would be like, "Hey, let's take a picture together." You know, he's the type of guy who would just go to you first. You know, and yeah. to me, that's really cool and humbling. Yeah. What um, what do you do? You see a what do you see for your character on season two? Huh. Um. Well, I see. There's a, there's so many directions that you could go with Kyler. Uh, now that you know he has been dethroned in a sense, maybe it's time for Kyler to get training. You know, like um, he could step into doing going into Miyagi Do. I don't see him going into Cobra Kai necessarily, but more towards Miyagi Do. 
or more towards like the more recent phenomenon of um, mixed martial arts, you know, like, so, cause he has a, he's coming from a wrestling background. So yeah. I could see him going um, either way. We'll see, like, yeah, we'll see. That's all the, that's all the two, the creators, the yeah. three guys. So yeah. uh, I'm really interested in what Kyler could bring and um, hopefully he could wreak some havoc maybe in season two. Yeah. We'll see. Uh, <laughs> Tell us about uh, one of my favorite scenes is the cafeteria fight. Yeah, that was an amazing scene. Gosh, um, uh, the stunt coordinator named Hero. He is the uh, power. He's the, he is a Power Ranger. Um, he's the guy that kind of coordinated everything, and he made it look really just just really dope. You know, um, we had great stunt guys on it. They're all just professional. And they all did a great job reenacting and just trying to reenact our body movements too you know yeah um but uh something that people don't know is like on that on that sh on that day um miguel or solo uh the guy who plays miguel he he's supposed to you know swing at me he goes um i i, I think i swing at him first or, some, or i grab him or I try to swing at him first and he blocks it and says no it's Cobra Kai or something like that, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> it's like, oh, I'm I'm sick of your stupid karate or something. That's what Kyler says, and he takes a swing, but um, uh, Miguel blocks it and says, "Now it's Cobra Kai." And then there on that take, on that first take, he actually socks me in the face. <laughs> oh man! Yeah, so I'm like, oh man, what the heck is going on? This is turning real. <laughs> um, but then he was quick to apologize, and it was cool though. Uh, yes, yeah, so I took a real hit from him, <laughs> uh, and uh, but it was you know like we're all me, Sholo, all the cast members. We're all so tight that it didn't really matter. Yeah. We just kept on shooting. That's awesome. Um, yeah, yeah, it was definitely dope. Um, that yeah, that take that took like a few days to kind of coordinate everything, like um, with Hero, the stunt coordinator. But uh, I think it turned out pretty well, yeah. and uh, you guys got to see this sweep the leg. So yeah, we did. That's kind of cool yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> so I know you want to keep doing the acting. Who's the one person that you want to work with on TV? Someday? On TV or a movie or or on film? Oh man, um, shoot! I would love to work with Johnny Depp. I would love to work with. Um, Man, Dwayne again. I would love to work with Dwayne. He's just a cool guy. Uh, shoot. Um, yeah, man, there's just so many. Uh, I would really love to work with Christopher Nolan, though. I think, man, his visuals, his his style of directing is just amazing. Um, yeah, like any of his films, they're just all eye-opening for me, uh, especially the, all the Batman series. Gosh, that Those was, great movies. Yeah, it was just amazing. Um, even Dunkirk, even though it was like a, there wasn't too much dialogue and everything, I thought it was just so moving. Um, so he's definitely one of those directors I really want to work with. Uh, and actors, man, I want to work with them all. I want to yeah. see like how I could vibe with them. I want to, you know, like touch gloves, like do stuff, you know, and really get in there. Um, yeah. yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> Any. Anyone big, anyone you could name, I would love to work with them. Yeah. So how do you yeah. like? How do you like try to improve your acting skills every day? How do you? What do you do? Um, every day, uh, shoot! If you could find a script to read and uh, just study it, because I think a lot of the times um, actors we need to study the script a little bit more. Uh, I feel like a lot of the answers are in the script, or all of the answers are on the script, um, as I have learned. And to improve every day, you just gotta know like how to decipher like the scripts um, in an acting mode, like in acting mode. And that takes time. Like for instance, uh, yeah, when you're reading, when you're just reading a script, yeah, you could just read it, but. It's all those things that are in between the lines that you need to take and transfer that into a character. And um, that's definitely something that, um, yeah, that I need to do every day and I want to do every day. Mm -hmm. um, we'll see, like, if I get busier with work, 
with uh, such work, then I'll be able to do so. Um, yeah. Do you have a dream role? Like, what's your like? This a, ro- a certain oh, role yeah. that you want to play someday? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I would love to be the first Asian superhero, man. I want to kick some ass. <laughs> um, I would love to be the first. Yeah, seriously, that and. Um, I would love to play uh, one of my dream roles, like ever since I was a little kid, was to do a, to be a soldier, like to be an American soldier. Okay. And whether it be like in Vietnam War or whatever, it's just to uh, fight for America and um, something like that. Because uh, I just heard, well, like growing up, um, yeah, like a lot of my parents and my relatives, my uncles and stuff, they they all have stories of like Vietnam war and all this stuff. And growing up, like we just, you know, yeah, just hearing all the stories. I just want, they will always show me like old ass movies, like, um, shoot, like platoon glory, yeah. like all these old school movies. And I'm just like, I kind of grew up on that in a sense. So that kind of like, um, yeah, I always wanted to play something like that. Yeah. Or, or even an epic, an epic would be dope. Like just to wield a sword and freaking and go on horseback like Genghis Khan. <laughs> <laughs> that would be so dope. Yeah. What are like? What are some of your favorite movies or TV shows that you're like you like watching right now? Um, I don't have a T. Well, I do have a TV, but it's not hooked up or anything. I don't have cable. I don't even have Netflix. Uh, so I'm pretty much in the dark. I'm in the cave, like literally. <laughs> um, but uh, I do watch a lot of film, and uh, I think that's where I, you know, um, yeah, that's what I do most is to watch a lot of film and uh, try to decipher film and see what's good and we'll see what's bad. Um, yeah. yeah, that's about it. Uh, I haven't watched any TV shows really. Yeah, well, you've been busy right now with all the. Uh, the tour yeah, you do for it, Cobra Kai and everything. <laughs> yeah, you guys, Cobra you guys Kai were busy, good, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's busy. Uh, I wish I was busier, um, but um, we'll see. Like, I just do want to keep working. You know what I mean? I just yeah. want to keep shooting, and yeah, that's that's some good dream. Do you have any projects that are happening, like, like from now until Cobra Kai season two starts filming? Um. Nothing like 100% solid because especially in this business, like there's nothing solid. It's like, you know, only when we start rolling the tape, when we start like, you know, shooting on, on site, that's when, we, when I feel like, oh, okay, this is legit. Um, I've just been talking to some directors and producers and that's about it. Um, yeah, I do also have a series coming up. Like it's um, that I shot recently called Vampire Resistance Corps. And that's with a brilliant um, director named Terrence Johnson. And um, hopefully that'll get picked up, but it still hasn't been uh, fully done yet. So um, we're still working on post-production stuff. Um, Yeah. And there's a couple of things out on Netflix still. And uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see where it goes. What, What is one fun fact about you that you want the listeners to know? Um, one fun fact? Oh, shit. Um, or a few. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. I don't think I even have any. I'm not that fun, man. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> just, um, shoot. Uh, um, what do you do in the nights that you're not working? Oh, man. Uh, I'm a nerd. I, I like I like to watch movies. I play video games, man. Yeah. And, um yeah i'm just a kid i just do stupid things like here and there but uh yeah um fun shoot um what's your favorite video game right now i I, I love fortnite fortnite's pretty lit um so i like fortnite um yeah plus uh, i play a bit of PUBG also so those are my two games right now are you into call of duty at all call it nah i mean i played it it's, 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 it's like hella realistic and cool but um it doesn't have the fun factor of fortnite and yeah. or PUBG yet you know what i mean like I, the whole survival stuff yeah. is just awesome i downloaded fortnite when it first came out on my phone but i still haven't played it yet <laughs> <laughs> it, it, you can't do it on phone brother you gotta yeah. go on pc you yeah. gotta go you gotta go live on <laughs> pc all right um how can the listeners find you on social media what are your social media handles 
Oh, um, it'll be on S E O N O O P Y. So like my first, my, my last, my last name, Snoopy, like Snoopy or Jojo C E O J J J O G A O E. J O E J O E S E O. Um, yeah, those are all my like uh, Instagram stuff, and yeah, you guys can follow me on that uh, Snap, whatever you know. Yeah. All right. Uh, is there anything else you want to tell the listeners before we end this? Um. Yeah, uh, everyone out there, just don't bully anybody. Be nice. Just spread love. Uh, don't be a Kyler, guys, and. Um, yeah, just keep watching Cover Kai. <laughs> Thanks for coming on. Absolutely, man.